Welcome artistic visitors and subscribers for this lesson where I'm going to be painting the night and it's going to include my technique for painting fireflies and even stars so it's kind of fun. Now I'm going to show you some of my supplies that I used. I used a majority of great American pastels and I've had this set actually for months but with a lot going on in my life I have not been able to use them until this particular painting and uh, I'm going to be oh here's the box top it is the Richard McDaniel's Plein Air Gallery. I really like this set because it was uh, it had such a nice assortment of colors and I love the way it was arranged with the values. Now a lot of pastel sets come with a piece of paper like Terry Ludwig's where you can actually mark the color of your pastels next to the number in case you run out of a color and you don't remember the number. Now Great Americans did not have that sheet so all I did is I took a picture of the open box, I printed it out, and I just made a little mark, you could see there to the left side of the pastels, by each one to get a reference of the color. Now I'm using uh, Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Card. I often forget how much I, oh, there's a piece of UART paper in there. I forget how much I love the surface. It's a very gritty surface. Um, this particular pad comes in all kinds of different colors. Six. Uh, uh, four to six different colors. I wanted to use this charcoal -y gray because I was doing a night scene anyway. And just a note, this surface will not take water. So don't apply watercolor or any kind of water-based medium to this. And now I've just got my, I think this was a seven by nine inch and uh, I have my little um, iPad holder here. A lot of people have inquired about this holder. It's really neat because it just hangs right over your easel or you know something, you know, whether it's an easel or a drawing table like this. And it also sits nicely on a table for sketching or whatever. Now here's my little hinge system I often use where I just put a piece of tape on the back of the surface I'm working on and have it sticking out of the top and then I just put a piece of tape on the top. That keeps me from having to put tape around the edges of my um, surface. I also like to share my little homemade uh, pastel dust catcher. It's nothing but some aluminum foil made, a, made into a trough. Um, now here's the photograph. I'm, I took a bunch of pictures in my own backyard at the new property my husband and I just got. Oh, there's a deer that visit my backyard. And I'm just choosing what I want to do here. And none of the compositions were quite what I wanted. So this is a time when you improvise and you kind of learn how to create a composition on your own. So I'm really moving a lot of elements around and I'm kind of seeing in my mind um, kind of what I wanted to do. My backyard scene was really flat. All I really saw was trees and sky and so I decided I wanted a little more interest so um, you'll kind of see as it develops but this is just kind of a little idea value study composition. I often do a little sketch kind of just to get an idea of where I'm going to head with the painting. So basically the painting served as a reference for color and value for me uh, more than the composition. But these are the uh, great American pastels that I chose. Of course it's a night scene, lots of cooler colors in the evening. You don't have sunshine and the warm tones, but I'm going to have a few warm purples and that little mauve -y, uh, color there. And I am going to have some darker greens. They're going to be muted and dull because there's not a lot of light. Now the moon is the source of light and I decided to make a little bit of a warmer moon. Uh, I am going to um, put down the darker yellow there first and then kind of lighten it up with the other values on the top of that. And you can pretty much ignore that little uh, colorful sketch that I did there. I quickly realized that the great Americans are so soft. They don't um, work well on that uh, paper that I have. You, you may see I like to cover my sketchboard or easel with um, uh, a type of, you know, just a cheap paper because I often clean my pastels a lot and sketch on it while I'm working. Uh, but they did not work that well for the, the colorful pastel sketch there. So, um, just don't even pay any attention to it. <laughs> I'm going to sketch this out. I just have a little pastel pencil. Again, I'm still just getting basic composition with this, uh, but let me go ahead and speed this up and you can kind of see where it heads. And some of you may recall that uh, often in my videos, I'll put the reference image up in the screen here, usually to the right, so that you can kind of see what I'm working from. But this 
was so interpretive. I was literally just using the image for the color, the value, maybe some of the shapes of the trees, um, but I was uh, kind of reinventing it. So there's not a lot of purpose in putting the reference photo up there. I might stick it up there in a minute. But um, at this point, I was still um, exploring. I've got a general idea of composition, um, but at this point, I was going to have mostly trees in the front and try to push back some trees in the distance. I love depth in a painting. I mean, that's really what we're doing is taking a three-dimensional world and putting it on a two-dimensional surface. So why not maximize that by having a, a, a place where your eye can go way deep into the painting or see some interesting elements behind. And this is kind of how I started. But the neat thing is that the more you paint, the more you look at the world, I highly encourage study the world, study um, how trees grow, how reflections behave, how light behaves, and uh, learn rules of perspective. And then you can start to uh, basically change um, your painting to what you see as artistically beautiful rather than what is necessarily in the photograph and you'll see as this evolves that I even change it from here I decide later that I thought it'd be much more interesting to have some water and reflection underneath there for interest than just the trees and the sky and maybe some distant trees pardon my head <laughs> I often forget that I'm filming and I stick my big old head in the, in the way um, this is a, a place I wanted to mention something also. When you're, notice I didn't draw, I, I mean I did with my little pastel pencil, a little circle for the moon, but I'm not making a line with that pastel. I'm really just kind of blocking it in. And there's something that makes art look more painterly and beautiful called lost edges. You really don't want any sharp lines. Uh, that is unless you're trying to really accentuate a little particular area in a painting. But for the most part, it's much more uh, free and impressionistic if your edges are just kind of lost between the outside edge and the inside edge. They're more edges than they are lines. So um, uh, also too, of course, the moon is a source of light in a night scene. So usually there's going to be lighter um, values around the moon. So I'm kind of overdoing that right now and later I, I don't make it quite as drastic. Um, but basically we're just kind of blocking things in at this stage and getting correct color and value. And in this particular clip, I'm using a piece of the pipe foam insulation that a lot of you may be familiar with, that a, actually a lot of pastel artists use this now. And it's just a cheap little easy way um, to blend. And you don't want to over blend because your painting can um, lose its color and get kind of muddy. But there are certain areas that you want to push back and less detail makes something look further away. And so I wanted that sky to be a little bit more blended. Now this is the point where I'm still playing around with maybe having um, almost like a little opening where there's some distant trees and I'm going to kind of carve those in. Um, I'm painting rather negatively now. Uh, negative painting is when you're you're painting in the holes rather than painting like the leaves of the tree. So I'm carving in those uh, those trees by the negative shapes that I'm painting around it, and um, still kind of having fun at this point and just seeing where I'm going to go with this. And I can't remember the point where I start, I realize, hey, I want to add some water, but I'm going to just paint a while and uh, let you listen to some music now. I thought I'd mention here how the light has changed. I literally was painting before it was evening and I had my studio lights on and now this is the next day during the daylight and, and uh, the lighting is so much different. So it's amazing how much just your external lighting can affect 
so much of your painting and your colors. Now I'm just comparing um, some values there. Again, now you can see I have added that water reflection and uh, I've mentioned in other videos that you want to reflect whatever's happening in the sky uh, into the water and of course reflections and shadows and things that are happening above. Um, so I'm playing around with some of these greens right here for the background and I later realized they're all too light that I, I really needed to keep that really dark background trees there that's just too light so um, I'm gonna fix that in a little while. I'd mention here that um, of course you see how I darkened some things up but reflections are going to work the same way at night as they do in the daytime so I'm using the pipe foam um, insulation there to pull those shadows down from those distant trees and then I'll add the water reflections on top of that it's going to make it much more believable if I have those reflections down in the water and I just happen to love some of these purples um, back there in the background there so this is a new pastel it's a harder pastel in you pastel not any w and um, they're great little harder pastels to have for uh, 
things such as actually blending you can do with a harder pastel like this i often just break them and take them on their side to blend if anything's kind of chunky or maybe a bit too um textured and uh, and they're just uh they're very versatile so i like to have a combination of soft and some harder pastels now i'm just adding some again what's in the sky is going to be reflected in the water and i'm um, measuring kind of where those purples are going to be based on where the trees are so again you can kind of see it come into life and how it's starting to be more believable as water and i'm continuing to work here i, I was going to um, kind of blend in some of that sky uh, there's kind of a stark transition from one blue to the purple um, so I'm just basically getting it to be a little bit more consistent and again putting the same blue that I'm putting in the sky into the water and now a lot of times you'll have uh, a painting you're doing where you have the Sun or a moon like this to where you'll actually see the moon's reflection in the water in this particular composition the moon is a bit too high in the sky if the painting was longer if I had more painting down at the bottom there you would actually be able to see the the moon in the water but in this case that wouldn't be um, correct <laughs> to put it in there but you will get still some of that light that's going to be a hint down towards the bottom right hand side of where that water is now you can see how i'm using the pastels um, themselves to kind of blend those colors in and i you know i kind of i have the advantage of being able to look back at my painting when i record it like this i recommend if you have the opportunity to do that um, it's a big help because often you can look back uh, like I'm doing now and say wow there's certain places that I, I really liked it I kind of liked that sky chunky like that and I uh, I think I end up blending it more at the end uh, I liked the final but sometimes I like the I'd say about 70 percent complete phase I'm going to speed this up a little bit I've had most of the uh, I know you guys like real time and I've had this mostly at only uh, uh, two times sped up which is plenty slow enough to be able to see what's happening and um but i, I want to get to some of the points at the end so i'm going to speed this up maybe four times and uh, you gotta get the idea see what i'm doing here and then i'm going to pop back in for a, a few other comments
I wanted to point out here that I, I use this little tool that uh, is actually a makeup brush. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law sell these makeup brushes. They actually had their own product designed and they sell them. They, um, they're really great for makeup. I just don't wear makeup a lot. They're, they're really good for blending, especially foundations. And, um, but I had this idea one time to just try them for blending my pastels and lo and behold i really like it especially this little one is i think it's meant for eyebrows but um it works great for small spaces um if you're interested it's uh the company is ovelbeauty.com it's o-v-e-l beauty.com not o-v-a-l and um again they come in four sizes and i i've really um had them work quite well for me now i'm kind of measuring some things again here i already spoke about how the moon is um, not going to show up in this in the water because I would have need, needed more paper down at the bottom there. So I think I'm actually talking there, but I decided to do a voiceover instead. And um, I've, you know, like I put a little note before, I'm playing around a lot with this because I'm doing it from imagination. And uh, the good thing is um, I'm kind of pulling the shadows down again with that little makeup brush, and it's brushing off a lot of the pastel, so it's still allowing me to have grit to the paper. The end goal is to get all the reflections correct and then I'm going to um, lay that water down on top of it and then it'll be more believable as water. So that's that's the goal. to zoom in the camera a little bit here so you could get a little bit more of a close-up as to um, just to see a little bit better about where the pastels are and and how I'm using them and uh, now you can see how I got that water uh, now I'm carving in kind of sky holes right now with that purple but now you can see how I I got the reflections right of the trees where the darks are and I did a little uh, sideways not what I'm doing now but in the water when I move my hand you'll see how I, I kind of glazed over the water with uh, some of the colors that are in the sky and see how it really gives that impression of water at night um, so again just a little carving here and there I love the carving part I think it's so fun carving out um, the trees um, and how they just literally come to life it's very cool so again playing around with the water a little bit more and uh, pretty soon here I'm gonna show you how I um, get the uh, fireflies. I, I'll give you a little heads up. I end up not keeping too many of the stars or the fireflies. I felt like they were overkill. It kind of was just too much. I almost looked tacky. So, um, But I'm going to show you real quick. Let me speed this up and we're about to wrap up here and I'll show you the firefly star technique. Okay, so the tools that you're going to need to be able to make the stars or fireflies, it's the first time I ever tried it with fireflies, is a grater. I typically have one that's um, smaller than this big one, but I'm kind of in between houses and places right now. So, um, But I just got some of the colors that I want to use for either the stars or the fireflies. The fireflies are going to be a little bit more of the the yellowy uh, and the stars are going to be a little lighter. Uh, like I said, I end up not keeping as many of them, but what I'm doing is I'm using the grater to just grate some various sizes of, of uh, pastel dust and um, I'm breaking them up a little bit. I find out that you want a combination of a little bit big and a little bit small because obviously perspective applies for fireflies just like it does um, with anything else in a painting. So I'm just, you know, kind of getting me some good chunks of pastel to work with. 
and uh, sometimes I'll actually for stars is grade it on top of the painting but I wanted a little bit more of a strategy here and I wanted to um, control the placement a little bit better so I'm actually using some little tweezers to uh, just go ahead and put the stars and the fireflies where I want them and then I do end up sprinkling some with my fingers later um, to get a little bit more of that random feel um, but stars and fireflies are going to be much like I've talked about with anytime you're painting things such as flowers in a field. Um, you don't want too much consistency. It makes your painting look um, amateurish uh, if things are placed in a pattern like, you know, you want a, a variance, you know, and I just think that's amazing how nature has this neat way of having so much order, but at times it has this spontaneity that's, it's almost like a beautiful dance. I, I often, often compare it to music. There's something in music called dissonance and it's like you'll be hearing this song uh, I think Moonlight Sonata has it I love that song where it's just sounding this one particular way and then all of a sudden there's this note or this part that's almost sounds a little off but it is so beautiful it's almost that little randomness makes the song and the composition even more beautiful so I'm trying to create randomness with my placements of these um, again I end up some of them are just too big um, but this is more so that you can see them and see the technique I do calm them down a little bit later so uh, you get the idea I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit and show you now these are gonna obviously fall right off the paper if I lift it up obviously I have this laying down and so what are we gonna do to make these stay in place and I'm gonna show you right now all right so what I've done is I've gotten a piece of glassine it's a product that you can use to actually protect your pastel paintings but I don't see why you couldn't just use a piece of wax paper I think I have used wax paper before for this um, and I didn't have a roller <laughs> like uh, you'd roll cookie dough with um, again I've sort of moved out of this house where my studio is so I'm kind of limited with some of my regular household supplies but this is just a big decorative bottle I had and it worked it was a big flat surface so I'm just pressing um, kind of hard where those stars and fireflies are and what it's going to do is especially because this uh, Sennelier Le Carte paper is so gritty um, it's going to hold um, some of these uh, like I said some of these pieces were too big you see how I'm, I'm blowing and and mostly they're staying um, but I go back and I kind of revise and uh, and fix it up a little bit uh, sorry for the shakiness there but you can kind of see if I if I pick it up those are going to stay in place and um, so that's how you can do it. You can either do it right on the painting um, if you want to just have some real randomness or you can kind of place them like I did too. But hey, there you go. Stars and fireflies with a neat little technique. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I enjoy doing this painting. I encourage you to um, just try some kind of night painting and uh, join our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. You'll get so many tips, techniques, and just a lot of really cool, warm, loving people. So anyway, guys, love you. And uh, I can't wait to be painting more and sharing more. Please subscribe. Happy painting. Bye.